Carefusion Technogross Project. The project was implemented in the following areas in Namibia. Maltahoha in the Hartap region, Mopini in the Kavango region, Spitzkopper in the Irongo region. The Carefusion Technogross Project, sponsored by the National Commission for UNESCO in the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibia. The sponsorship was made possible through the UNESCO under the Participation Program for 2016 to 2017. Maltahoha Hartab Region. The project received support from the local business community through providing a dilapidated building to restore as a training center where girls and women could learn technical skills such as painting, renovation work, sewing, and health related skills. The building was historic from the German colonial era and the requirement was to maintain the original form. The first day, only three girls attended. However, as the project proceeded, more joined. The building's woodwork was in a repairable state at certain areas, but the owner wanted to use some of the wood on the premises as part of restoring his German heritage on the land. The one room's wooden floor was removed to accommodate the owner of the premises. Everyone listened attentively to the instructions and started off in high spirits. The building was built with local clay from the river. Some of the clay mixes were not correct and decayed over time with rainwater. The area is drawn with stones, a lot of clay and building sand is available. The team attempted the kitchen and the training spaces before the rest of the building. Mixing cement and sand seemed to be fun. But the real fun happened when they attempted completing the stone walls for the sink in the kitchen. Outside, the building was secured with a stone wall. All stones were picked up from the surrounding hill. Window pens were lifted and more scaling of walls. Lunchtime arrived and everyone smiling. The Plan Your Future conference and financial literacy took place in the renovated building and we were supported by the local secondary school with tables and chairs. It took a while for the community to become part of the project, but eventually all ended well. The next stop for the team was Mupini Kavango, where according to the youth workers of the National Youth Council, it is the hotspot of teenage pregnancies. The youth workers advised the NELCC team that it will be the best place to have the conference under trees and the technical training in the same place. Upini is the former mission station of the Finnish Missionary Society in Kavango. It is located along the Kavango River, about 18 kilometers west of Rundu and 62 kilometers from Rupara in the Kavango West region. Namibia's Global Hunger Index scores 3%, but in the Kavango region it appears to be higher than the rest of the country. The region was characterized by an extremely uneven population distribution. The interior is very sparsely inhabited, while the northern strip, especially along the Gavango River, has a high population concentration. Largest urban settlements were the capital Rundu and the towns of Kurenkuru and Divundu. Government development efforts contributed to relief over the years that led to other social ills such as migrant workers at the Green Scheme projects having sexual intercourse with the schoolgirls for a small amount of money. The Seconda Green Scheme project in Mupini Kavango brought relief of employment for the unemployed, but community population increased, and with the increase, social ills such as teenage pregnancy increased. The head woman of the area joined the NELCC team for the conference under the trees for the planning phase and contributed some building materials. She guided the team where to build as well. The community meeting concluded that they needed a barbecue stand rather than a house built. This will support the area's teenage moms to generate an income to support the new found families. Planning and matter liberation until the final plans were ready to embark on the technical skills training, the layout was agreed on, which was close to the current belt butchery sales point. All the time while in training, most girls brought along their babies and infants, although in rural settings most do not have parents to care for their babies while in training. It was also great to observe the good parenting skills they were inclined to have while the materials were laid out and some had to be acquired from Rundu, 17 kilometers from Mupini, where the training took place. They were taught how to measure, carry poles and corrugated iron sheets, and collect stones from a nearby location to use as building blocks. 
Some evening, when all were not used, some materials had to be carried back to the headwoman's house for safekeeping. Many questions were posed during the training, which the team welcomed. A translator was used to assist with understanding the explanation of the concepts. The training team observed how one ghetto was killed for slaughtering. There was much excitement in the air when the power tools were offloaded and the technical details were shared. Hello, we are finally to Pindi Village where like, we are training. As you see, we build something for us, so we are going to put, um, we are going to dry meat and so. So we are happy that they are training us properly. Thank you. Thank you. We came to receive training at the community market so that we can learn how to build houses with materials available in Mopini. This is the place where we sell goods as well. At the moment, the youth are receiving training so that they know how to build houses for themselves with local materials such as stone, wood and clay. Instead of relying on their parents to build for them, they are learning how to build houses and buying much less building materials since we have trees which can be cut down to build the houses with and mud used for the walls or cement if the money is available. When the building is complete, they can be proud of what they have built with their own hands and energy for their own families. No one should wait on their parents to do it for them. We are happy that women and men are included in the training on how to work for themselves so that parents are not burdened. The trainees learned about nails and woodwork followed by the power tools. The ladies were a little scared at first to touch the power tools. As they were guided, they gained more confidence and were eager to learn how to handle the different tools. The welding was again on the scary side for them, but as they continued to practice, confidence grew to handle the welding with much pride and joy. A hive of activity broke out near the building site, as the felt market was established when the senior citizens were receiving their social grants. These were now potential future opportunities for the girls to engage in income-generating activities at a bright stand selling barbecue and fresh meat or fried corn during season. Then followed by the Plan Your Future conference under the tree, the lady lawyer introduced herself and asked everyone to do the same. The appreciation of the session was great and they had many questions on how to rectify them not accepting advances from men in general if they do not want to. The role plays they ventured into let them learn how not to offend the person or get disturbed. So basically what we're doing here is just, we are, I am giving you what your rights are and how you can protect yourself if your rights are being done. So I'll start with myself. My name again is Minikela. I am born on the 6th of September 1992, so that means I will be 25 this year. I did five years um, of, of, of law school, so I finished my law degree and I am currently a candidate legal practitioner with a board for legal education. Um, and yes, I have a passion for young women. So that is my name, that is my age, and that is where I am now. I'm mm Banja Anastasia. I'm -hmm. 27. And what are you doing now? What? Nothing. What do you want to do? My name is Manza Esther and I'm 27 years old. I drove from Britain. So I only have one kid and I'm a jobless. And what do you want to do? My name is Frank Hilde. I am 18 years old. I am in grade 8. And I want to finish my education. Why do you want to finish? Because I want to be a teacher. A teacher? Why do you want to be a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I want to help you. Okay. What I was, what I'm trying to get out of here 
is just the fact that as women and as girls we need to really have a future for ourselves and not literally have other people see a future for us but that we should see a future for ourselves and in the questions that I've asked there are people who don't know what they want to do and that's because society has allowed us to not have know what we want to do and we just take on the form and the shape of everybody else so I really want the, the ladies here to know that they're queens and to know that they have a message for their children and their children's children and their children also have futures uh, name two rights that you learned today and why they're important right to fight for life is protected by the police uh, you can be protected by the community I and mean, you can be protected by the government by the police and then Salma, um, what was important for you today when we were speaking? Rituals was very important. I learned as as ladies we must go to school to put more effort to study hard so that we must become educated. The, when we go to UNAM, we will become someone important to educate some other people in our community and to with our parents not not become pregnant and, and going get the bar drinking moving drinking tumble something something like that and then Anneli, um what is your message to other girls out there and young girls yeah for them just to study hard finish their school and for finally have their dream job and if happen to Boyfriend and they may just always compromise his protection. The next facilitator allowed them to share their personal stories of suffering and guided them to become aware of their rights as young parents. The decision was quite emotional and very sad. However, it appeared that after the session, they were happy to have more similar sessions of enlightenment. A girl called Anneli lost her baby to the father, who is a medical doctor and lives in Germany. The support during the program gave her the courage to attempt again to get her baby to come visit her in Namibia. Selma and a few others had gone back to school and are doing income generating projects to maintain themselves. They were told that they could cry for any time when they do not feel safe. It was also mentioned that the access to condoms is not easy. Therefore, the team acquired a box of condoms from the Rundu State Hospital and shared it with the community leaders. Then it was back to the building. They had to mix cement, water and sand to form the base for putting together the stones for the building site. Soon they could see the result of their hard labor. The Spitz Copper area in the Rongo region of Namibia is a community settlement of mainly farm workers' families who are not allowed to live on the farms. The settlement's leadership is eager to support the development of unemployed youth. Most are living in corrugated iron shacks that are very hot in summer and very cold in winter and unhealthy. The wise headmen welcomed the team and introduced them to the participating community members. The participants were daughters, mothers and grandmothers of the beneficiaries. They agreed on the place to build and asked whether it was possible to do something at the kindergarten like a swing as well, which the NELCC team agreed to. They wanted a half-open space like a market stand where they could sell their local crafts. Water is a scarcity in the area and had to be catered by a vehicle to support the trading operations. It was not easy to dig the trends, therefore it took a little longer to start with the building training. The language mostly spoken was the Maranama and a translator was employed to assist with the language barrier. Meals were prepared on the open fire, the headmen also assisted with the digging of the trends. Community members joined when they saw the effort that was necessary to get out of the ground. Foundations were laid and most young teenage moms were actively involved. Then followed by the precision setting up of the support structure for the roofing. The walls were built with bricks acquired from the Caribbean brick making within the wooden structure. 
The floor structure got compacted before the walls were erected. More sand was added to gain higher level then before the potential rain damage. The floor was laid with carefully prepared mortar. The senior headman came to look at the progress and then shared a few words. The headman said thank you to the NELCC team for bringing such training to his community to learn to build houses with local materials and much less acquired from the building material suppliers. He as a leader do not want his community to live in shacks and appreciate the opportunity to learn how to do more affordably and differently, especially the women who can with time build on more safe and healthy housing for themselves. We are happy to eliminate the shacks from our community with the skills that we're learning here today to build stones, bricks and cement. The women and children are suffering in the heat and the cold in the shacks and we are happy that we can change the situation over time. Thank you very much. First of all, when you come, you steal our people, you teach our people, they learn how to set up these strong uh, walls, houses. Uh, the same experience they will use in the future to, 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 to build their own uh, accommodation, their own houses with uh, stones and bricks. And, uh, and they will have, have decent houses, safe houses, houses that are not so cold and that are not so vulnerable as the, the, the other structures are. <laughs> We have also made the floor, so I have gained a lot of experience how to build my own house. So in the future, maybe I will build my own house by myself. My name is Navases. I am a sports cover community kindergarten teacher. I am teaching the learners from four to five years. And I'm very grateful for the gift that you've given to our kindergarten children for the swings. If I build a house, I want you to come and build for me. Also. Okay, thank you, Calvin. Okay, See thanks. you.